Just, just recapping, on the 19th of March, the, minister, the, the then Minister Prugard announced that 293 housing properties in, Rox, in the Rocks and Millers Point were to be sold. Uh, sold. Um, they included the 79 apartments in the Sirius building and a total of 214 heritage listed properties. The social impact study was made public on the website at the same time, even though those very strong commitments had been given only days before that it would be released to you and you would be consulted before any announcement, if you remember. Um, she then appointed uh, Linnell Briggs to, uh, to facilitate the sale and the relocation program. I did meet her to get, together with Alex and I actually told her exactly what I thought about the process she was going to have to go through. It was a very, very, very testy meeting, I've got to say. Um, Housing New South Wales then appointed a dedicated team of 18 relocation officers and social workers to relocate people living in the 293 tenancies, and they report to Linnell Briggs. Um, uh, the relocation team has made contact with nearly all the tenants. Um, the few that have not responded have been sent letters asking them to allow the relocation person entry to their homes to see if they're okay and explain what services are available to them to help with the relocation. Um, most tenants have had an initial review with the relocation staff. There's a range of detailed information collected on each tenancy and used to make an appropriate offer. Support workers, neighbours and staff from Marrickville and the Redfern Legal Centres have gone with tenants to some of these interviews. Housing New South Wales um, introduced what's called My Property Choice on May the 13th. That's all a bit cynical, isn't it? This program aims to promote properties in other areas and give tenants a bit more control in the relocation process. Initially, properties were shown every Tuesday, but this has now become every fortnight. And I understand, is that what you're calling the lotto? Yeah, yeah. appropriate. I'd like to thank all the people here that are supporting. There's too many here to go through, but you know who you are. And I would also like to really uh, thank you, the tenants, for sticking by us. He's really stuck strong, and that's why, why we'll win this in the end, as long as we all stick together. Solidarity, that's the way. So, uh, one of the first people I, I will really like to thank is Kim Butcher here from TARS for the wonderful job she's done over in the UN. Not only bringing aged care rights to the world stage but Millers Point. He's been getting letters about inspection. Now there are three forms of it. One is an inspection which we've had in the past. Uh, they come around and they look at your house and or your dwelling and you tell them what you want done and as we know it doesn't get done. It's uh, a joke amongst us uh, used to be that it was a spying mission. They're just coming in to see how many is living in the joint. So that's the ordinary inspection. There's another one. They're coming around and they're evaluating your property. They're measuring up. Naturally, they're measuring up to sell. One of the most frightening ones I've seen from one of the tenants is it's got health and safety on it. So this is where we want to say to all the tenants, tell your neighbours, they might be trying health and safety. They could come into your house and say, that's a bad electrical problem. Sorry, you can't live here under the safety, uh, or the sewage is leaking, that's a help. So in other words, that's a way they'll try and move you. We've formulated a plan to beat that, but we need you not to face these people on the, your own. It's like the relocation. If you get an inspection notice, and we have got it in writing that the department said you can have Redfern legal there. So we want to make sure you don't face that on your own because if they try to safe and healthy, we've got a plan to beat that. All this stuff you see on this on TV, don't believe it all. I know a lot of you don't, but it's just their spin and it's about time. Uh, we, we're starting to get some favourable press because they're starting to wake up saying, hang on, what's going on down here? This is a community that's been under attack. They're selling these houses out from under us, yeah? So what we've got to do is, in, in the very near future, we've got to start demonstrating and, and showing, showing force of strength 
to stop, to make this noticeable, to, to hear our voice that we object to this, as do people like Clovermore, Lord Mayor Clovermore, as does Alex, as does Sophie Costas, and as does a lot of other uh, support, and I mean a really lot of other support. And what, when we make this, when we stand up and make this noise, and they all join us, then we might get somewhere. You have client legal privilege when you ring the Redfern Legal Centre and us. Don't sign anything. Do not complete anything online without printing it out first and giving it to us to look at. It's very important that if someone shoves something in your face, you say to them, I need to get advice. I will get back to you after I have reviewed this with my advisor. The Department of Housing is seeking to relocate you. The Department of Housing staff are not your GP, they're not your ACAT team, they're not your physiotherapist, they're not your counsellor, your psychiatrist or your carer. They should only be asking you for information that relates to the relocation. I think Lendlease has a responsibility to do something. If they intend to build office blocks and apartments in such a large area, what are they going to do about the residents that haven't moved yet? The website talks about 23,000 or 26,000 people going to live and work in the Barangaroo area. Well, surely they can help you. If there's a Lend-Lease representative here, I'd like them to answer that question directly. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. And thank you for the work you do. So, uh... In terms of affordable housing, I should say we do have a policy in place, as the, uh, the Lord Mayor mentions. We have a certain percentage of the housing we are constructing at Lend-Lease that will be affordable housing. Uh, that figure is 2.3%, so certainly uh, not a huge amount. I absolutely recognise that. I, uh, I certainly thought that might be the reaction when I mentioned it. That policy is being worked through in terms of how that housing is delivered, what form, but it is not a significant percentage. And I do agree with what the Lord Mayor was saying in terms about mandating certain elements for developers to make sure they do deliver on things. But from our perspective, we will certainly uh, deliver on our commitment that we have. So I don't think that's uh, probably the, the answer everyone wanted to hear, but that is our, our policy on where we stand. Uh, and certainly I can uh, to take any questions on notice. The first designer, was it uh, Dallas, was that the name? Yes, it, it was well documented that he recommended 7.5% be affordable housing. He was sacked and the next designer put down 2.3%. I would like to ask a simple question. Why was it brought down from 7.5 to 2.3 per cent? Philip Thallis and his design did, uh, did win that. There were a number of iterations throughout the process and Lendlease was awarded the development rights to then design and construct the project. There were many changes from that original design and that's no secret that, that what we're building now was not what was originally talked about in 2009. One of those changes is the number of buildings, the number of residential apartments. There's a huge number of changes as part of that. And certainly I can, uh, can come back to you on whether that affordable housing was one of those. We cannot trust land lease then. Whatever they tell us they're gonna do, we cannot trust that. That is not gonna happen. We have the same commitment to engaging with the community and working with the community that the company started 45 years ago. So we engage with many communities, not just this community, around every project that we have, and that is certainly my role to make sure that we deliver on that. Four days after the meeting with the liaison officer from Barangaroo, we find out that they've been doing secret deals behind our back to take our homes at Millers Point. 